Now we're going to talk about forced oscillators. Let's say that I take my uh, damped oscillator of the previous uh, video and I apply to it a new force, a time dependent force. So I'm going to apply here a force f of t and the force that I'm applying is f0 its amplitude times sine omega t a sinusoidal force uh, with angular frequency omega okay so if I write Newton's second law uh, for this case so if I call this axis x net force on the x-axis is going to be f of t which is f0 uh, sine omega t then I have the restoring force uh, because this is a spring with spring constant k that has been extended uh, by an amount x so I have minus kx uh, then I have the retarding force minus v this is equal to m x double dot mass times acceleration remember that the volume of the object is very small so i'm neglecting the effect coming from buoyant force and gravitational force negligible all right so buoyant force uh, and gravitational force negligible so if you solve this equation of motion uh, you're going to get oscillations at the frequency of the uh, driving force so basically this new force that I have introduced into the system is what I call the driving force it is the force that is driving the oscillations now if my driving force is such that the energy that I'm imp inputting into the system with this driving force um, is exactly compensating for the energy that is consumed by the retarding force then I will have sustained oscillations okay <clears throat> so if the energy input rate input rate that's the power is equal to the energy consumption rate by the retarding force then I'm going to have x of t will be a cosine omega t plus phi just like uh, similar to undamped oscillator because I have accounted for the energy loss in the uh, damping process so this is my uh, identical solution for the forced oscillator where I have compensated for the energy loss. One, there's one important difference though. The amplitude of these oscillations are given by F0 divided by M square root of omega square minus omega 0 square square plus b omega over m square remember omega 0 is my natural frequency it is equal to square root uh, k over m so that's the natural frequency 
So this will be the amplitude of the oscillations. So that will be the effect of doing this using a driving force. Now, <clears throat> if you look at uh, the behavior of the solution here, first of all, uh, the vibrations, vibrations at the driving frequency, driving frequency omega, and when omega equals omega zero, when omega equals omega zero, we call this process resonance. We also call this frequency resonance frequency. Resonance frequency, that's the resonance condition. Uh, what happens is that the amplitude A is maximized. So if you substitute omega equals omega zero, uh, into this expression here, you will find that A will be equal to F0 over M divided by uh, BW over M squared. All right, so A is going to be maximized. Um, so we're going to see maximum amplitude oscillations. And this is this condition basically means that the power delivered to the oscillator is a maximum at resonance uh, the power input power by the force that i'm uh, using to drive the oscillations force dot product with velocity is maximum so it's the maximum power delivered to the oscillator uh, at resonance. Now, if you look at the behavior of the uh, amplitude as a function of omega uh, and as a function of B, you see the following uh, situation. When omega is equal to omega zero, you can see that the amplitude is getting maximized. So this is my uh, resonance frequency this is my resonance frequency and as I go away from the resonance frequency the amplitude of the oscillations getting smaller and smaller and smaller and the effect of uh, for a given uh, driving frequency if I increase B what will happen to the amplitude so let me uh, analyze the situation here if I increase B the amplitude will become uh, smaller and the resonance curve basically broadens so i can observe this here as i increase b the the full width at half max uh, so these um, let me use a different color here so the width of the uh, resonance is basically increasing so B, the damping coefficient, is basically controlling um, the, the resonance curve and basically it broadens as B gets uh, larger and larger and larger. Uh, there is a very nice demonstration of this uh, resonance process for uh, um, the Tacoma Bridge. Uh, so I strongly recommend that you watch the a video on uh, demonstrating the uh, the resonance in the Tacoma bridge bridge uh, leading to the failure of this catastrophic failure of this bridge eventually